Hey guys, welcome back to Lisa Gollum Art. Um, I'm sorry I have been a little AWOL lately. I <laughs> haven't been posting a lot of videos for the last few months um, for many, many reasons. One of which I'm designing a new online course and it's taking a lot of my mental focus as well as I've, you know, been navigating some new health challenges and just life. But um, I thought I'd pop on today because it's spring and it's so beautiful out here. I could just like sit out here all day. <laughs> so I did just think that it would be really fun just to come on quick and let you know what I've been working on. So some of you know that I used to be a therapist in my old life back in the day. And I still very much see art as part of that for me. Um, it keeps me sane in so, so many ways. And because that I'm a little bit in a unique position as an artist or as an art teacher, that I don't like just focusing on techniques and how to's. I mean, I do that, of course, you have to do that. But I also am so, so, so passionate about art being part of our soul or part of our healing process, part of our self-expression that's why it's called self-expression it's expressing the self and i think that sometimes in the art world we don't focus on it as a newer artist it can kind of get you stuck in just sort of making pretty pictures or painting something that looks okay but hasn't got a lot of heart underneath um there's always times you want to focus on a technique of course um, and that's part of my model too. But I think that what might set this apart from a lot of other things is that I kind of take the counseling piece or the self-awareness piece and marry it with art technique and sort of bring it together. But to, for today, I just wanted to give a quick idea of what it's all about. I start with some introspection sometimes meditation or mindfulness exercises, mostly journaling. If I'm struggling with something, I just talk about it. Or if I'm happy about something I talk about, it doesn't have to be sad stuff. Just whatever is on your heart, get it out. What am I feeling? What am I struggling with? What am I excited about? Something that triggers some emotion because emotion is kind of what makes the quality of your life and we are humans and one of the things that makes us human is that we feel things and some of us more deeply than others i'm a bit of a feeler but i really really recommend as an artist even if it's just a few minutes that you spend time in introspection and so and sort of getting it back in touch with yourself before you start to paint so that stage i call introspection so this whole model every step you will notice that the every word starts with I N. So that's why I call it the in process model of creative exploration. So after I've introspected for a while, I've usually got some kind of sense of the main meat of what I introspected. Like that sounds really weird, but like the main emotion or the main sense. So from that, I think how, how could that be represented visually? So what I want you to do with those kinds of symbols that you think of or the visuals, even if it's just a color or a texture that makes you, th that looks like how you feel in that introspective piece you did. Then you go, usually I go to my computer and to Pinterest or just Google or whatever, and just search for some images to inspire me. So I sometimes spend a while in the, inter in the ins inspiration stage of my process and sometimes I go back and forth between introspection and go back into thinking through things and writing some more and then back to the inspiration and sometimes that can be percolating for a long time between those those things so but when I want to set some paint on a canvas the next stage I call intuition another inward so in the intuitive stage you've probably seen a lot of those on my channel I try to now not think anymore. I try to sort of quiet the mind. And I do that a lot of different ways and I'll get into that more in the course, but there's a lot of ways to kind of hone into that flow and just to let go 
and I literally think as little as possible and I throw paint out of canvas. I, you know, grab whatever brushes is handy or whatever intuitively I just want to grab and I just start making stuff on happen on the canvas. And in this stage, things can be messy. They can be quick. Usually not a long, long stage for me. Half an hour usually is lots of time just to get some marks on a canvas. And I like this because then you don't have to worry about the blank canvas. It gives you something to leap from. So that's the intuitive stage. Um, the next stage I call intention. So that's where some art training comes in to play. And then you start editing. Now, the beginning of that process is mostly figuring out where the focal point is, where the places of more rest for the eyes need to be, calming some things down, directing the viewer to where to look in your painting, um, all that stuff. That is just the stuff of art that we're talking about there. The next one, it took me a while to even figure this one out, but there was a sort of a step just beyond intention and I call it intensity. It's ramping up the volume because what we focus on in this stage is thinking about what does our piece mean? What does it communicate? What's it speaking? What's it saying? Um, what do I want the viewer to feel when, when they're looking at this piece? And after you know all of those things, what can I do now really physically to this art to make it communicate louder, to turn up the volume, to turn up the intensity on that communication, make it as communicate as strongly as you possibly can with the skill level you're at. And then usually when, the, when we're done this stage, our artwork is done, but then I go to the sixth stage, which I call integration. So that's when you start, you now again, step back and you just look at your art. And it can be a very meditative, soul searching moment. And you look at the art, you think about, and you re-experience the journey that this piece has taken you on. And start to then ask yourself, like, what is this t speaking to me personally? How is this piece of art communicating to my spirit to move me in a new direction or to move me out of a bad place, to move me forward in my journey. And of course we go back to the journal and sort of write some of those insights down because there can be a lot of insight. That's another good word, insight. Our pieces speak, they speak to other people, but they really speak to us because they've come from our subconscious, from our soul onto that canvas. So there's things in there for us that we are to integrate into our lives and we allow our art journey to change us from the inside out. A lot of in words today. So that's the model. But once we, we kind of go through the integration and insight stage, stage at the end, it really does naturally lead back to the introspective stage again and that's another you know okay so now that i know how this piece is speaking to me what do i need to journal about through or think about in that respect what more is it bringing up for me okay now take that and make another piece and go through the process again and round and round and round and round and round please leave me a comment in the in the comments below let me know what your thoughts are if you have a different process for creating your artwork also don't forget there's going to be a link in the description to my website where you can sign up for my my email that way you can be kept informed so that when i release my course which will be by the way probably over 10 hours of content and I will, I'm going to price it very, very affordably. So um, you will want to get on that list so that you know when that is coming up. So peace and love to you. I'm, thank you for being here and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.